Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the timingresearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 154 for March 30th, 2021. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com. And uh, today we will be discussing your trade ideas. So uh, today I've arranged for Doc Severson to join us. And uh, you should be seeing his screen right now. And so we're going to go through a bunch of uh, trade ideas and charts and take a look at those. And then also I have the option professor here to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. Thanks, David. And welcome, everybody. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have a great show here today because the markets uh, obviously are having some uh, uh, big activity lately, pressing the highs on many things. So uh, we'll go through some of these stocks that you've got here. And then uh, Doc can also give some ideas that he's looking at as well. Uh, before we get started, Doc, uh, for people who have not uh, uh, been in introduced to you, could you introduce yourself and a little bit of a background on what you're up to right now? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Uh, yeah, again, my name is Doc Steverson. And uh, most of my services are available over at uh, readyset.trade. That's the actual website. It's not a .com. But I've been doing this now for, I've been doing this professionally now for 15 years, been trading about 25. So it took about 10 years to get it right before I felt comfortable uh, tossing into two-week notice. And uh, almost a gunpoint, I've been helping people as well, too. What you find is that when you go out and uh, quit your job and trade from home, all of a sudden it gets to be a very lonely isolating existence. It's just you and the dog. So people uh, started knocking on my front door and asking for help. And they've been doing that uh, for the last 15 years. So happy to help them. And it's, uh, it's really what I love is trading markets and, and lighting other people up to what the possibilities are. Great. And at the end of the broadcast, of course, uh, we'll let people know how to get a hold of you and get more information on uh, all the services that you provide. Um, today, uh, we were kind of back and forth, back and forth. Uh, it looks like everyone's waiting for the jobs report on Friday. So uh, obviously, uh, the activities uh, you know, can be pretty volatile. But let's go through this list a little bit and see what's going on. The first one is ARKX, which is the brand new ETF that came out from the ARK guys. And I think it has to do with space uh, exploration and well, let's see. Star Trek or bit. something. I don't know. Let's do some Elliott wave analysis on this one single candle. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, it just came out. Uh, yeah, I know. There's not much to do with this one. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned the jobs report. Uh, uh, I don't think a lot of people have picked up on the fact that the market, the cash market is closed on Friday. The futures will be open. Oh, uh, yeah. The Globex. Uh, so you'll have a little bit of time to react or hedge to... Uh, uh, to the jobs report based on that. So you have about an hour in the Globex session, but after that, it's like, uh, you got to wait the three day weekend out. Okay. So, so you better be able to plan, uh, plan ahead. Yeah. Plan ahead, plan ahead, you know, or even into Thursday. So not much I can say about this one. I mean, I'm obviously we've gone from a low of, um, 20.07 to a high of 20.7. So there's not much analysis I could do to this. So this is the new, uh, uh this is Kathy Woods company, right? Right. Arc. So this is her new space exploration and innovation. So it should be interesting. I'm sure there's a couple of other ones out there. If you want to just try one is called UFO and the other one is ROKT. And they may have more data. Ooh. So UFO, this is interesting because this is a bit of a descending triangle pattern here that I'm seeing. So be careful of this one. Now, you might see this break either way, but the probabilities do favor this thing, maybe break into the downside. Sometimes these things can create, when it does break to the downside, everybody gets it wrong because everybody's leaning in the long direction. So all of a sudden it comes plummeting out and then this can create a big slingshot move to the upside. Right now yeah. the trend is still to the upside, but it could take a little bit of a longer time frame consolidation. It is holding the former highs way over to the left a little bit though, right? Oh, these ones over here? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the swing test at about 28, yeah. which is good. Anytime you can hold the swing test, that's good. So, I mean, uh, right now the probabilities favor a little bit more of a dip, but ultimately longer term, this is still still good. What was how, the about, other you how about ROKT? ROKT. Oh, I love that ticker. That's great. Uh, boy, you could tell this thing was illiquid as all get out back over here. Look at all the gaps all over the place. This looks like trading FXI or something like that. Now, th this is kind of cool because we're seeing a broadening pattern. You don't typically see those that often. 
where the volatility is expanding. And so what that means is that there's a lot more people watching this thing and we're just getting some big swings back and forth. But this, this last, last section here is almost mimicking what we're seeing in the NASDAQ, almost exactly. So, uh, you know, interesting on that. So obviously a break above 40-ish is, is positive for this one, but I would expect to see the volatility continue on this yeah. one until the, uh, the broadening pattern finishes. It has a little bit of a better uh, look to it than the other, huh? Yeah, I, I think so. I yeah, think so. Because you got higher highs and higher lows a little bit. A little bit anyway. Anyway, let's turn to the next one. Uh, it's too early to tell on ARKX, uh, but if you're a believer, I guess uh, you start uh, chomping into it a bit. Uh, Tesla, TSLA. The thing I saw in uh, ARKX is that it doesn't have listed options yet. Right. So, but if you look at the rest of her ETFs, they all do. So it's only a matter of time before she gets them. Now, Tesla, yeah. there I've saw so much, so much going on in Tesla today because a lot of people are sitting there going, Oh, look at this. And you know, they were looking at one candle. Everybody gets fixated on one candle. But if this if this does put plant its foot in the ground and set up a higher low then a trade above 700 is, is not only going to break the trend line, but also print a higher high. So, you know, the next 50 points could mean a big difference in Tesla to get the shorts on the run. Now, I haven't looked at the, uh, let, me, let me look at something really quick here. I want to see what the volatility is doing for Tesla. I have not looked at that. I, I don't actively trade it all that much. So actually the implied volatility has come in quite a bit on this one. Uh, since the initial dip. So we could see this thing plant its uh, foot in here at 600 and drive higher from there. That'll be yeah. interesting if it does. It's trying to set up a, maybe a little bit of a one, two, three formation where it uh, went, uh, when it, uh, what do you call it? Uh, went down to 550, then it came back up towards 700, then it pulls back to 600. Right. And then if it takes out 700, now you could be back in the game. Oh, dude, you're old school. I'd never hear anybody talking about one, two, threes. Yeah. Well, they've worked a long time, so yeah, <laughs> they're not a bad yeah. momentum play, believe me, because if you're short and it takes out 700, you're covering. <laughs> right. So this is what Jim is talking about here. One, two, three. Boom. Yeah. And they're pretty powerful. But they're, they can be pretty powerful. That's why I try to keep an eye on them. Um, all right. This one is in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, it's one of my neighbors, and I still don't own a share, which shows you how... Uh, Sometimes you can miss the bus, even if it's outside your door. This is Riot. Riot. Has this one got any? Yes, they do. They do have options. Oh, I'm sure they got everything now because it's gone from 50 cents in the last 52 weeks or 60 cents for the last 52 weeks up to 51. So talk about Home Run Derby. Oh, look at this. We have earnings after market central time. So I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to go over to, I don't know if they've announced it all, but I want to go over to a tick chart here and I'm going to pick up on Riot. Yeah, because these guys uh, got to be making some money with the uh, with the uh, with the Bitcoin going nuts to sixty thousand. You know. Okay, I don't see any reaction. So either they have not announced yet, or we just don't have any. Um, they picked the wrong date or something like that. Okay, let's go back to Riot. So what I like about this one is this is this is your classic big symmetrical triangle, just big move. But we're obviously mirroring what's going on with the crypto markets right now. So we're just in a big consolidation. Although I will say that this is lagging somewhat like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin and Ethereum are both very close to all time highs and this one's lagging a bit. So it's still consolidating. And just to get a better view on this one, I'm gonna pick up um, three time frames here and cheat this one. So we're gonna go out to Riot. So man, look at the look at the history on this thing oh, More yeah. 51 cents so it's it's waking up you know it's waking up it's uh it's actually got a lot of energy here at the weekly chart so no shortage of energy at the higher time frames which is really good so this thing is ready to pop so you can either be aggressive right now uh, especially if you break about 53 or you can wait until the symmetrical triangle breaks out on good volume Certainly you got uh, volatility there, huh? Yeah, there's no doubt of that. So this is a, you know, what a great trade for, um, let's, is there any, 
wonder if there's any open interest in it. Actually, that's not bad. At least the monthlies uh, are pretty, pretty thick. The weeklies are pretty thin. <laughs> this is called the, the old Roach Motel. Yeah. You can get in, but you can't get out. So yeah, stick to the monthlies on this one. Now, the one that I own is GBTC, and that seems to be very much lagging as well because it used to trade at a big premium and now it's trading at a discount or I don't know what it's trading at actually. Yeah, it should be up. Well, no, I take that back. It's very close to, uh, if, if we were to bring up BTC, you'd see the price just a, just a hair below the, the most recent March lower high. So it's just a hair below there. So it's, it's lagging a little bit, but actually this looks pretty good. I wish they would offer options. This would be such a great cash secured put, mm. but yeah. uh, no boy, no. Because the premiums are just enormous, I imagine. They would be enormous. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's one that got hit because of the biggest margin call in the history of the market from the guy over there at uh, wherever he is, uh, and Viacom, V-I-A-C. Ar and uh, I, I can't, I've never figured out, is it Arcade? Arcados or something like that. Something like that. Wang is his name, I think. W H W A N G or something. Oh, that's right. He's one of the tigers. He's one yep. of the tigers. There's a whole bunch of these guys, and they're just like a pack. You know, no pun intended. But I mean, these guys have been around for a long time. They've dominated hedge funds. So that low of yesterday, though. Do you think that low of yesterday is an extremely good tradable low? Um, I see this one as being. I see this is probably doing something like this. It, yeah. Usually in a bottom like this, you've got to, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people that jump on long and they're going to get, they're going to get washed out. So that's, that's typically what the market likes to do is, is you've got to convince every single last one that the bottom is in or that there's no hope going forward before this thing will actually rise. So I would be very, I would do it like you've done it, which is just take it as a trade. Don't take it as an investable bottom. Wait until this thing, yeah, you know, truly pounds out a bottom and starts to rise. And this is what I tell people all the time. I'm like, you know, don't catch the falling knife. Just trade stuff that's trending higher. Trade stuff that's trending higher. Make it easy on yourself. And this company did do a secondary offering and people are now concerned about, you know, why they did it and this and that. So there's a little bit of a, a curveball in there as well uh, to go along with the fact that, uh, well, I mean, it went crazy anyway. It was $5 to a hundred or something like that. So, you know. There's not as much premium down here as I would expect to see for this, uh, you know, going out to May. Uh, so May is already pricing in a little bit of a bounce. So yeah, yeah. be surprised. Okay. All right. Well, the next one is a uh, pharmaceutical uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, and uh, a lot of people really like this company. This one, to me, this is a larger time frame. This is one of those ones that's going to drive you nuts because you're going to see all sorts of patterns in here, or at least I do. You know, I see ascending triangles setting up, and you know, larger time frame like inverted head and shoulders, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And you look at this, and you're like, "Wow, this thing is going to really take off," and and it's, it's one of those where you've got to hold in for a long time before it finally, you're going to get a lot of fake outs around, around the, the neckline of this one. A lot of fake outs and it will test the, you know, to temerity of whomever chooses to trade this one. So I love to set up longer term. It's just that I think it's going to be really rough to get this thing to break out. It probably needs a drug or something uh, to make it break out. And that's where, probably why it goes back and forth because the trials and all that stuff, you know, some of these companies is sometimes they have an Alzheimer drug that's going to work. Sometimes it starts failing in trials. And so, you know, there's a lot of news that comes out with regards to these kind of companies, I think, right? Yeah. You know, that's, it kind of brings up an issue is like, you know, what I found over the years is that I have kind of given up on trying to stay up with the fundamental news on a lot of these stocks, because I yeah. just can't, I, you just can't be an expert on 8,000 stocks and what they're doing. And, you know, try to play the Jim Cramer routine of, you know, knowing who's on the board of every company. that. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just not very good at it. You know? So yeah. what I found is that I just sort of look at the price and I say, well, look, all the news that's known right now is discounted into this price chart. And I can be an expert on the price chart, but not necessarily an expert on the company. And so I, you know, this is what you do over time is that you figure out what you're good at. You figure out what you're not good at and stop doing the latter. 
and really try to uh, go with money flow, because obviously if the news is going to be quite good, uh, there's going to be a guy who knows it way before you do, and he's probably buying if it's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be reflected in the stock. So really following the, the money, which is really what you invest in. I mean, you don't invest in the, uh, in the guy who's on the board. You invest on uh, how the flow of money is coming into the stock or is it leaving, right? Yep, absolutely. The price will tell you everything you want to know. This is another company that a lot of people love, uh, ABV, uh, ABBV. Pays a great dividend and uh, you know Buffett bought a whole bunch of it. And uh, so maybe there's something to it. I don't know, ABBV. Uh, this is, I, I love this pattern here. I love this high and tight weekly pattern. It, it, you can almost imagine this as sort of a spring wing wound up like this. This is the analogy to me is that when we see a high and tight flag like that, so you'd want to see a couple of things here. First of all, you'd want to see a good break. Here's an example of a failed break. Uh, so that was a failed break on here. So, uh, you know, a break above this level, above a descending trend line on good volume that breaks out above the 50 in this case. And, you know, this is, it's going to be a good move if that occurs. So I, I like this one. Everything looks really technically good about this one, but you got to, you got to wait for the break. There's a, you know, since this thing pays about 487, according to my screen anyway, uh, 487 yield. I mean, obviously people are buying it for the dividend. Why don't we just throw up a couple of more dividend things that might be worthwhile? Because like USB pays about 3%. USB and, and, and you know you're getting a bank and you're getting a good yield, and uh, what do you what do you think of USB? Uh, you know I I have uh, I've kind of hated the banks for years now because they just haven't done anything and and Congress has been has given them you know such a heavy hand and they've been non performers for a long time but this could actually be one of the better inflation hedges that are out there is to go after the banks because the higher the higher the interest rate goes, the more spread that these guys are going to have to work with. How about uh, the telephone guys, uh, Verizon VZ and Telephone T? What a sloppy chart. Uh, you know, somewhat of an inverted head and shoulders, but boy, you've just got to have the patience of, you know, a monk to stay in something like this. Again, if you want to just play the dividend game, yeah, because that's like what it is. Said Verizon, I mean, but yeah, I, am I going to tie up my capital for four percent a year? No, I mean it's it's something if you can if you can write calls if you can sell puts against something like this, then it might be worth it and to have that as a little bit of a kicker. But to me, you know, four percent. Yeah. What about telephone paying six point seven seven? That's a little bit sweeter. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it it still doesn't uh, still doesn't get get me going here, but. You know, I, I like to have something. It seems like, though, that the the more that you earn on a dividend, probably the worse performing it is. So I like oh, yeah. something yeah. that that is setting up nicely. So I, I kind of like the pattern here. And if we can get a break above this, that's not that's not bad. That's an inverted head and shoulders. But, you know, I ideally, you'd also want to pick something that has a monthly uptrend. And right now, this does not. So wait for the break, and then this might be a good play. Yeah, because you're. Uh, it, it might be a very large head and shoulder bottom a little bit there. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was pointing out here. It inverted yeah. head and shoulders, and you know, nice break up to maybe thirty-seven or so would be the measure. Yeah. Twenty percent plus six percent is uh, not a bad total return. Um, with regards to Cisco, uh, this is a company that people are starting to get excited about again because it's gone from thirty-five bucks up to fifty-two, and. Uh, there we go. There's there's our inverted head and shoulders. There's our breakout, and there's our measured move, which is going to be roughly 65. So mm. this is pointing up to 65 on the measured move, if we can get there. So that's um, I I like this one. You know, this one has been disappointing me for years, and I've yeah. sort of given up on looking at it. And the fact that somebody asked about this today is actually pretty good. So this one may be worthwhile looking at. Got a dividend coming up here pretty soon. Where is that? That's four, five. So just another week or so, and there's a dividend being paid. And, and on much, April 5, huh? Yeah. How much is that dividend? That is to be pretty 286. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Um, where is it in relation to like it's um, five year high or something like that? I mean, in other words, yeah, there's still room to go because this thing used to trade uh, and uh, just under 60. 
Yeah, so I'm, yeah, like I, I'm showing this thing, uh, you know, could have the potential to go up to 65. Yeah, like I say, a lot of things have blown out their former highs. So, uh, you know, it might make sense that a company like this to, might be on its way now because, you know, there's rotation going on into the ones that are playing catch up a bit, huh? Yep. Yeah, uh, this, I mean, everything is, you know, dogs of the Dow. That, Cisco's been lousy for a long time. This is uh, This is another kind of a descending triangle pattern. So this one's holding the swing. This holding, wow! I didn't realize this was. We're talking about a dollar fifty stock. I was going to say we're penny stock and uh, land now here. Yeah. So it's uh, so it's holding the swing test at a dollar fifty. Is this one optionable? I have to see. Nope. I would not think so. Anything under five, it's a I've rough racket. I've been surprised. I mean, you know, you've got stuff like sundial out there with dollar fifty puts. People are playing. So uh, yeah, this one's holding the swing test at about a dollar forty, which isn't bad. But if it breaks that, it's probably swinging all the way down to the two hundred, because right now we're seeing you know it's it's a monthly upswing, but it's a it's a down trend on the weekly chart, and that's kind of combining with the the uh, descending triangle here. So this you know watch out for this thing coming back down to sixty cents. And that, yeah, that, may he, it, that may do it for the swing, but then, you know, we should probably see something because then you'll see, you'll see the monthly trend kick in again. The stock has gone from six cents to $2.91 on the high. So obviously you could have made a very big hit on it. The other thing is, is people scoff at the dollar stocks, but it did 50 million shares today. <laughs> so um, it's nice. It's, it's like playing an option without the time value decay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And it's, uh, what do you call it? And it's certainly got a lot of players. There's, I mean, it, it's amazing how much retail has made the, the difference in that. Uh, just with, you know, I I saw something from Liz Ann Saunders today that the majority of people's stimmy checks are going into <laughs> their live trading accounts. Well, I mean, this is a particular account on a $1,400 uh, thing. You can get almost a thousand shares. So that ain't bad. Yeah. So this is ASML. The direct opposite. Yeah. Man, this is <laughs> super, super trade. I mean, $600 a share. Um, I honestly don't know what they do. Uh, so right now, short term, you're going into, we've hit a weekly exhaustion, which is consolidating, and it's built up almost enough energy to let this thing rip. But the daily chart's kind of gotten ahead of it. So what I would want to see on this one is a short little high and tight flag up here at around 600. You know, just go ahead and, you know, bang around in that box a little bit. you got a dividend to watch out for here. But ASML is a leading, uh, manu uh, a leading manufacturer of chip making equipment. And obviously with the uh, shortage or the supply chain problems, um, maybe they're benefiting from that. Absolutely, but it seems like they've been benefiting for years. Yeah, they've been but uh, they've haven't they accelerated quite a bit in the last year? Yeah, this is a very nice looking chart. Let me see. Yeah. Do they have? They do. They do have weeklies. And they've been around for a long time. They were founded in '84. Look at the look at the earnings growth that's happening here. So a buck nut, you know, two dollars. It's going up to three dollars, and it's going up to four dollars. I mean. Mm -hmm. Earnings growth has been phenomenal in this one. This is, um, it's, you know, this is why I love doing these events because I don't know about this stock. I have never traded this one before, but this is um, certainly a very nice candidate for kind of, you know, swings and vertical spreads where you don't care about necessarily the absolute cost of the stock. Right. They're out of the Netherlands. And, uh, you know, like I say, if they're, they're uh, making the chip equipment, um chip making equipment uh, you know uh with the uh, supply chain problems maybe there's a heavy demand uh from intel and people like that uh, who are trying to uh you know start new like their intel's going into phoenix to, to spend 20 billion dollars developing a manufacturing area i think maybe this is one of the companies that would benefit from it yeah it could be could be here's uh this is um mr cooper Oh, yeah, this is a Leon uh, Cooperman's uh, favorite stock, one uh, of his favorite stocks. So here's another example of descending patterns break to the upside and, you know, create that squeeze to the upside. And this is, uh, man, what a rocket ride. 
but it's it's doing so in a very orderly fashion, which is kind of nice because it's doing so without losing a lot of a lot of energy to the upside. So you've got a chart which is actually still ready to go. Looks like they've already reported earnings. So we're clear of earnings on this one. And um, yeah, I like this one. This one does not offer weeklies. And let's see what kind of, you know, this is this is the type of stock that you you would do cash secure puts on something like this because it's got a lot of volatility. Their, their liquidity is not that great, but you can do, you can sell puts on these things and it doesn't matter that much. So this one looks really good. Just a rocket ride, man. And they're a refinance mortgage company. So uh, the housing industry is still pretty active. And so obviously that's why they had the big run this year, but uh, there's not to say that there's not more to come because, uh, you know, economic activity is supposed to be pretty big with GDP jumping to 7% or so. Yeah. I. Yeah, I, I like everything about this, uh, with the exception of the the monthly chart is a little bit extended, and it may pull back to like 30, 25 to 30 or something like that in that area, you know, typical like a FIB retracement type of trade, but uh, the, the trend is super on this one. Uh, the next one's Pepsi, right? Pepsi, and I, I looked at this one before, and it was like, what a nasty looking chart. Uh, this is... I don't recall if I've ever traded Pepsi. I don't think I've ever once traded Pepsi because I look at this and I go, Bleh. you know, the monthly chart looks okay. Doesn't look that bad, but then you get into the daily chart and man, this thing has been almost the whole year just going sideways. So just, you know, unless let's see if this is one of your dividend plays here. Uh, two, eight, seven. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's just, you know, I guess I'm going to turn up my nose or something like that. Because, well, I'm saying for a dividend, you know, it's not like 1% or no percent, you know? Right. So, I mean, you get a little kicker on it, but it's like, you know, if you're if you're just holding this stock for the dividend only, there's going to be an enormous opportunity cost versus what you could do with it. So, to, yeah. you know, unless, unless you can, you, can uh, you know, augment through selling something. So you're focused on more of the higher beta companies. So these kind of companies with lower beta, they're not as interesting to you because you're figuring if I'm going to invest and I'm going to take a risk, I might as well get into something that's going to move. Oh yeah. I've been, I've been selling stuff like, you know, the SPACs and some of the EV companies and some, you know, just the ones where you can get a dollar a premium on a $20 stock and, you know, you can get a 10% return and it's just, it's crazy stuff. You have yeah. to have a, a strong stomach for it, but the reward on those is is phenomenal. If you can avoid the bad times, you'll do great. How about Coca-Cola, since it's obviously the neighbor of Pepsi, KO, uh, also pays good dividends. Is the same kind of chart or a little bit better chart, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit better, a little bit better. Both of them are just, you know, over the last year have been kind of dead money over one year, though. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. But they are supposed to be maybe, you know, when people get out and start spending money on their sodas and when the summer comes and I guess maybe the people are kind of front running the summer demand season for uh, cold beverages or whatever. Yeah, it's, you know, for me, I just, you know, I look at the chart and I, I don't necessarily see that, you know, I just see something that's been flat for a year or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I, I lack those fundamentals, Jim. So, you know, I'm just saying, I uh, just using a, uh, some common sense thing for it is, is that the restaurants have been closed. They sell a lot through the restaurants. Yeah. Uh, people haven't been going out and doing much. So you don't get as much out of the grocery stores. So anyway, the next one here is uh, NVIDIA. And I was looking at the put selling on this when it was down at the 500, 400, 450 area, because the premiums were enormous. What do you think of NVIDIA? I like NVIDIA as far as, I mean, this thing is coiling up and is needed to coil up because this is the, the typical thing. Look, when you go parabolic on a monthly chart like that, eventually right. you're going to have to pay for it. And so this is just a, a big box consolidation happening on the monthly chart. And so because of that, you're seeing the, the weekly chart just all over the place and you're not seeing much of a trend at all in the daily chart. So this is another one of those ones where you're just going to have to wait it out. You're going to have to wait until the monthly chart has got enough energy to support the next trend. And it could even drop out of the bottom of the, the, the pattern. And that tends to accelerate things. This is where you get kind of your slingshot move. But if you want to take this short term, I would say, you know, short term over, you know, say like 540, here would be a good entry because that would support a higher low, higher high combination, nice reversal on the daily chart, take it for a trade. Uh, but if you want to hold, 
this thing longer term, you're going to have to have some patience before this does break out. They got a great business. They're into everything. And, you know. Oh, yeah. And you can't get a video card for love or money these days. Yeah. Uh, AZN? AstraZeneca. Uh, like super. <laughs> uh, Not the greatest uh, news. Uh, blood clots when you take their medicine, right? <laughs> right. I am scheduled tomorrow, too. But I think I got mine yesterday and it didn't hurt at all. Yeah, mine's uh, mine's a Pfizer. So yeah, I'm going Pfizer. Too. Actually, just, I mean, I went Pfizer. Yeah. Somebody somebody just uh, put a uh, Pfizer ticker in here. They want to see Pfizer. So maybe they're getting their shot too. Yeah. You know, no, I think Fi Pfizer might be turning. I think they might be on something. But anyway, you want to go over this one, yeah? So this one, uh, this one is a little bit of a, you know, this obviously there's a lot of indecision in this chart. And you know, typically descending patterns will break to the upside here. So you can just sort of take this one, one step at a time. It's going to break through 52 before it gets anywhere. Um, but right now what we're seeing on the daily chart, lower highs and lower lows. So there's a downtrend on the daily chart. There's a downtrend on the weekly chart as well too. The monthly chart is just a pullback. So this is where the different time frames uh, disagree with each other. So reversals start from the inside out though. So if there's going to be a reversal back up to an uptrend, it's going to start down here at the smaller time frames first and typically like patterns like this will explosively break even if it's just a lower high on the weekly chart even if it's just a lower high on the weekly chart you're going to an explosive move out of that pattern so just looking at that one you got a dividend coming up here fairly soon so if you're doing call spreads you want to be careful of that but otherwise yeah this one this one could break pretty strongly here but only for a trade right now. Um, and uh, they want to look at Pfizer. And if you're going to look at Pfizer, we might as well take a look at uh, Biont uh, BioNTech too. Because that's Pfizer's who made like, the drug with Pfizer's them. Pfizer's like one of these. It's This is like a Pepsi pattern. Or it is, it pattern. is. It's just really ugly. I mean, it's yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> on the larger time frames on the monthly chart. It's, it's actually not a bad looking chart. It's just that when you get into the smaller time frames, you're just seeing a lot of noise here. So there's just a, a, a tremendous amount of money just flowing in and then flowing out, flowing in, flowing out, just a lot of rotation into this thing. And it's tough to technically look at this and say, you know, so this, this to me would be an example of more of a fundamental. We could, let's play dividend here, which is a 432 yield. That's why people buy it. Right. So this, this to me is like, this is a non-starter in terms of a trade for me. If I'm looking yeah. at this as a trade, I'm really not interested in, in something like this, but when it does break, it's going to be a big break because that's a lot of, a lot of spring being wound up in this thing. Now this, uh, the company that went with them, their revenues went from $33 million last year uh, in Q4 to 44, uh, 400 million what this year. And that's a BNTX. So I would imagine BNTX has gone through the roof in the last year, BNTX. Uh, there we go. And it's, now that looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That looks way, way better. So, you know, I guess your eye just gets drawn to this stuff after a while, but we're getting pretty close now. It looks like that we've just reported on these guys, but the uh, it's getting close to the apex of the triangle here. We're getting a, just a ton of energy. So markets don't typically sit in a consolidating pattern with the volatility is you know, just vectoring into the apex here. And it usually, it's almost like you can think of the analogy of holding an orange pit in your fingers and squeezing really hard. And you're going to get that thing flying out of there pretty soon, you know, with velocity. So I would, I would anticipate this one might be a nice break to the upside. So a break above 110 on this one looks pretty good. Yeah, there's expecting 2.5 billion doses to be created um, this year. So that's a heck of a lot of revenue to the company. And like I say, uh, they reported and it was something like, you know, 40 million to 400 million in revenue. So that's a tremendous revenue. Uh, this next guy is the old Microsoft. Yeah. Microsoft is, is one that I, I saw this weekend and I was, I was thinking of doing a trade and I've just not been able to pull the trigger because we've just had weakness. Now this, this to me looks like, one of two things, either we're going to see this triangle consolidate break to the upside, 
or this is the beginning of a bear flag break to the downside, revisit the 200. Don't know which way it's going to go. And so that I just have not been able to pull the trigger on this one. You know, everything looks pretty good on it. It does have earnings coming up fairly soon, like near the end of April with all the other big tech stocks. So this one is going to be pretty soon is going to be, uh, you know, we're going to have to just lay off this one. But, you know, hard to argue with that trend. Everything looks good. But I'm still looking at Microsoft as a trade. Uh, next one up and last is a carrier, I guess. Is that carrier? C-A-R-R? I do believe. Yeah. Super trend. Look at the breakout today. Yeah. Nice. They got split off from um, somebody else. I forgot who. Yeah. Uh, that, Spin off. That good. It's, <clears throat> it's trying to break today, and it, it just has not been able to do so with any conviction. So I don't know if that gap needs to be filled first before it's going to generate enough negativity to break out of there. But uh, the shorts are not on the run just yet. But still, I like the chart. Looks really good. Looks really good. There's a couple yeah. that came in um, on the list here. Uh, one is the Chinese EV, NEO. Hmm. Okay, so what we have here is we have a, you know, we can almost throw the fibs on this thing and it's probably coming back to a 50% to 38.2. So we have a, a monthly pullback and then and during a monthly pullback, we're going to see all kinds of noise on smaller time frames. So this is just setting up kind of a, so far this is setting up a higher low here. And if it's going to break back up again, we're going to have to see it break above 45 or so. 40 to 45 is going to st have to start that break. There is no shortage of uh, fuel to, to push the next run. So the only thing that I would say is that maybe the monthly chart's not ready to go yet because it's still in technical exhaustion down here. So another, another few weeks consolidating down here inside of a triangle and then seeing the break, I think that would be good. But NEO was one of these high flyer EVs. Oh, yeah. Everything has just got everything in the EV and SPAC area has just gotten crushed lately. But could be one of the first ones out of it. Uh, do you have some other ones you're looking at, or could I suggest a few? Well, let's see. There's two others here that somebody, uh, Theo, Theo uh, wrote in here. Okay. On the chat window. So uh, one of them is home. Hey, Theo. One of them is, uh, let's see, home. What's going on with home? We have a monthly uptrend here. We have a weekly. This is a, kind of an ugly trend, but it's it's making progress. It's pulling back really hard right now because of earnings. So earnings are apparently a disappointment, or maybe we're already priced in. Who knows? But if, if this one's going to reclaim the trend, we're going to have to see it trade above about 29. If it trades above 29, so the, the way I look at this is like a decision box right there. We'll put the highs and the lows. Either this is going to form a lower high, lower low combination by breaking below 24 and then probably heading down to somewhere down here, or we're going to see it break above and outside of this box and then create that nice pullback move like that. So you have a decision box. Let it just sort of trade around inside of there and then just either take the breakout or the breakdown from that level. Next one is, and this is the last one from uh, Theo, was very. Oh, yeah. No, this is supposed to be a good one. Okay. Well, uh, again, this one is a monthly pullback. So a monthly pullback is going to manifest itself. And this is pretty, pretty vicious pullback. That is, like, that's, that's like the most gorgeous swing test that I've seen, right? Swing test. Boom. Look at that thing. Right at 19. Right. Mm -hmm. 200 and just popped off of there today. So I, you know, look, this is a, definitely a catch the falling knife trade. What I would expect to see this thing do is maybe you get a tradable bottom, but I'd love to see this thing hammer itself out with a higher low and a higher high combination, or Jim, as you would say, a one, two, three pattern breaking above here, like maybe 30 or wherever that, that lower high sets up on this thing. So I would wait until this thing turns around. I mean, if you wanted to sell puts against this one, if there's puts that you could sell, are there? Yes, there are. You can get way down there and still get paid pretty well on this one. There's there's some decent open interest down there. 
uh, with this one. So if you're willing to step in front of the freight train, you can sell some premium on this one. Uh, let's see, we went through, let's see, the last one that I have from the chat room is Goldman Sachs, the evil empire. Mm -hmm. Sachs. I went to one meeting in my former life there in Manhattan at Goldman Sachs, and I kind of walked out of there going, I will never, ever work there. <laughs> So this one's, you know, obviously a, a nice, nice monthly swing to the upside, getting a little extended, but that's okay. The weekly chart has gotten a little extended, could use a little bit of back and forth here because it's just kind of climbing out of exhaustion at this point. The daily chart is doing okay, but again, big banks are going to report in two weeks from now. I think Goldman Sachs goes the second week, so it may be three weeks from now that Goldman goes. Let's see, what do they say here? That is 413. No, it's going to be on the first week. So 413 is on the first week, which is two weeks from now. So I would say this one will probably go sideways until earnings and then may react after that. Uh, the, the banks tend to run together if they do well or do, don't do well, things like that. So uh, Jim, what were you going to suggest? Well, there's some uh, markets that have had good runs, and I'm just trying to see where they are technically. Uh, one would be energy, XLE, just to get a one up there, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at this. I mean, that is like a perfect higher low and then higher high combination. That's a perfect reversal like that. This is where, you know, I mean, if we're trading off the hard right edge, if we're looking at the weekly chart here, Everybody's shorting this thing down here and saying, oh, this is the easiest trade in the world. And then a couple of weeks later, it's like, oh, shit, what do we do? <laughs> you know, like this is a this is a definition of a short squeeze that's come out of a former downtrend reversing into an uptrend. So right now, now that this is sort of reclaimed the uptrend, it still has a little bit of work to do. It's gotten a little extended and it right. may need another couple of weeks or so before it's going to be ready the trend again. So a lot of people are jumping on this as the next pullback, but it may be a little premature. They're looking back at this and saying, oh, this is the next version of this, but it's too late. So we may have to do, you know, those of the you that are Elioticians may have to go through an ABC corrective wave or something like that. But just a couple more weeks of corrective action, this one's going to be ready to run. How about the financials uh, generally VFH? I mean, uh, XLF. Almost the same deal, almost the same deal. Now, look at that monthly swing, like just, you know, like out of like a phoenix from the ashes, right? This thing has gone nowhere for the longest time. And then boom, almost like the Russell 2000. Yeah. Russell 2000, like I still can't explain the Russell. And maybe maybe you can, but I, I can't. I don't know where the, the, the growth for that thing has come from. But... Yeah, I mean, this one could use another few weeks of consolidation at this level before it's ready to go. But um, after, obviously, it's waiting on the earnings in two weeks. Once we get through the earnings in two weeks, this thing will be ready to to, to fly if it's if it deserves it. Right. It'll have um, and there's two markets that uh, seem like they're holding on for dear life right now: uh, GLD and SIL. I have no idea how to i mean these these are two like you know the first words out of everybody's mouth if you say inflation is oh precious metals gold and silver and you know for this to be doing this right now i have no answer to this right now we're we're in a we're in a weekly downtrend this is a this is a pullback on the monthly chart this is a weekly downtrend which is pretty serious and obviously we've been in a a long-term, you know, since last summer, long-term daily downtrend. And, uh, you know, I, I can't explain it. I guess it's not for us to explain or to try to figure out, but the price is telling us right now that this is a pretty serious pullback. You could even make the case that this is a lower high in the monthly chart as well, too. This has really not been an asset to be holding on to for six months now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, silver, same story, SIL or SLV or whatever. You, yeah, whatever. I've been I've been trading SLV and SLV is in a little bit better shape, but still, 
you know, so this is this is more of a case where we had a higher high here and it's just a pullback. So this is no doubt just a pullback. And it's only just a pullback on the weekly chart too. So this is more of just a being part of the big big monthly pattern right now, just trading within a range from about 20 up to 28. So right now, the, everything that we see on the daily chart is going to be captive based on what's happening there. So, you know, again, I can't explain it, uh, but right now the price is saying it's really soft and it could reverse tomorrow, but, but we'll see. You know? then, we'll, then we'll know, but right now it's not telling us that at all. Right. Uh, what about the, the two good uh, beta ones, uh, QQQ and SMH, uh, the tech and the semiconductors? Okay, so here's here's what I'm seeing on on the queues. The queues is we've got a decision box here, which is about let me let me zoom a little further on this one because it's one of two things is going to happen here. Either we have this nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern, and if we get enough enough negativity down in this area, if there's enough unhappy people that are just folding in their cards, then we may actually get the squeeze to the upside and we get that measured move, which is in the blue here, which would be nice. But right now I'm not convinced of that because right now the, the market can't figure out what it wants to do. So I don't know what it's gonna do. The only way that I can deal with this right now is to put a, just put a box around this price. Right now the 200 day moving average is overhead resistance on this guy. So that is, that's our overhead zone, which is about 320 on the queues. And then the downside of this is about 307. So if it breaks the bottom of this, I think it's going to be screaming bloody murder all the way down to the <laughs> Sayonara. Two right. It's, it's, it'll drop out of that box. It'll peer over the edge and it'll just tumble. And chances are what I've seen typically is that those moves happen overnight because yeah. professional gaps happen overnight, get people to panic. And then the, you know, the margin calls come, the redemptions come, and this is where we drop. But even if it goes down to there, it's still only a 14% tip to tail move. It's still only 14%. And that to me would get things, could get things moving. Again, if what people need to understand for the most part is if you want to go higher, sometimes you have to go backwards first. Yeah. It's one step back to two steps forward. You got to build up that negativity and that that excess negative sentiment for things to move higher, because uh, essentially you need people to either uh, have to buy uh, because they're short, or have to buy because they're out. Right. And when you go down to that number you're looking at, you'd have a lot of people that are short and a lot of people that are out, and all the and those two people are very large potential buyers. Right. What you want to do is you want to create the obvious trade because right. the obvious trade always gets faded. The obvious trade is going to be to short this thing as it falls out of the box. And there'll be a number of people that do that. And maybe they're going to be successful. A lot of it depends on the liquidity of that. But if you build up that, that situation where all of a sudden, you know, my litmus test is whether Kramer is dragged out to go on the today show in the morning. Well, we have Jim Kramer with us here. <laughs> what the hell's going on in the market? And it, mm. when he comes out, I know that the market's about to bounce because that, that's almost like the litmus test of you know, excess you know, negativity that comes out. Now, the whole world was short the dollar. So I was thinking it was bottoming at 88 or 89. And that has been the case. Right now, everyone is short uh, the TLT. And I'm taking a shot at the buy side around 135. Is this a stupid thing to do? Or what do you think? Oh, that's a... There was something that I saw the other day from Sentiment Trader, and this, maybe this is not the other day, this is maybe like three weeks ago, but they said that this has set a new record as far as the relative strength index on a pullback on the uh, on the TLT. Yeah. So I was looking actually to, to do a call spread on this thing a couple of weeks ago. I'm kind of glad I didn't do it. But at this point? I just couldn't get a fill. I just could yeah. not get a fill on this for, for what I was looking for. Right. So yeah, I, I mean, this thing is really pulled back and it should slingshot. Uh, the I didn't look in, in terms of what the 10 year note did today. It started higher, but it finished slightly down. So I'm, I'm hoping that this trades within a range, at least until the market can kind of acclimate and wrap its head around, okay, maybe rates will go, maybe 1.7 isn't the end of the world, right? Right. So that, this is kind of what I'm hoping that the, 
the tenure note will just quit doing this rocket ride thing and just give the market a chance to sort of unwind some of these carry trades and get its head around what's happening. Now, you know, we have a trade deficit that is so huge, it's ridiculous. And that means that our money is going out to these foreign countries, particularly in Asia. And uh, I, they have got very low PEs. So could we look at something like a VWO, which is a emerging market uh, ETF, and maybe a couple of the Chinese ones and see if you see anything happening there? This is a developing market from Vanguard. Oh, I haven't traded Vanguard since I had a 401k. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's any, there's a million of these ETFs. EEM is another one. Yeah. Um, what I see on this one, a little extended on the monthly chart, and it's we're starting to get into that consolidation, that kind of shake and bake. So this may be under that that spell for a little while. I mean, this looks good. This is okay. You know, it's coming down on here, but we may just shake and bake inside of a range here for the 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 near future until this thing is ready to go. How about a real briefly, uh, uh, K Web, K W E B and FXI, which are the Chinese ones? Ooh, this one obviously got hit the other day. Yeah, that was the margin call guy. Yeah, I mean, the trend's still there. And as long as this stays above 70. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. The 70 is the swing test on this one, as long as it stays above 70, which is roughly, roughly where the 200 is, that this may be okay. You know, but it's going to have to bounce and it's going to have to support a trend with higher highs and higher lows. Nice discount off the high though, huh? Uh, a big time, yeah. What is uh, What do they have trading here? N not, boy, that's not too many puts. Bad. Yeah, there's there's a lot of puts down there. Not too bad. And how about uh, FXI? Oh yeah, FXI. The Gap Monster. What a mess! Look at this thing. Yeah. So this is not, you know, again, this is one of these ones where you just don't want to be long-term on something like this. This is very much a short-term trade, but the range is there. If you look at, you know, former resistance, former resistance, former mm -hmm. resistance becomes mm -hmm. new support, then this might be a good landing spot to, you know, set up a put spread or, mm -hmm. or kind of, you know, cash secured put or something like that. I've, I have not traded this one all that often and found like tremendous amount of volatility and, and just liquidity down here. It's just not paying much. Look at this. We have an IV percent of, uh, you know, 28% implied volatility, just not paying that much. So that's kind of a tip of the hat to what's, what's going on with the chart, which is not that much. Right. But, you know, good high probability trade on a bounce above 45. That's what I was thinking. All right, let's go over how people can get a hold of you and uh, doc exactly what kind of services you provide or information they can receive if they contact you. Well, what I'd like to encourage people to do is just go ahead and, and sign up for elite.readyset.trade, which is a, a free community that we offer. So rather than me telling everybody all about what I do and all those kind of things, you know, just join our community, just check it out kick the tires, see what we have there. And you're certainly welcome to stick around for free. You know, we're not going to spam you or pound you or anything like that. It's like, we're just looking for people that we want to run with. And so far, we have a lot of folks that have taken us up on this offer. And, you know, we're, we've built a community out of this, just based on, you know, the, the free folks that are out there, as well as the folks that follow me in the morning as well, too. So, that's elite.readyset.trade. Become part of our 10X tribe. Just check it out for free. Come in, in say hi, ask us a question, do whatever you want to do. It's uh, it's your home as well, too. So that's my invitation for folks today. So I appreciate uh, David and uh, yourself, Jim, for, for doing the uh, AYT today. Sure. It's been a pleasure and enjoyed working with you today. Okay. Thanks a lot for being here, Doc. We'll talk again soon. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, as far as option professor is concerned, we do have a, a free a month, a weekly newsletter that we send out. You just simply go over to optionprofessor.com and put your email in, and then you can get that uh, each and every week. And then we have a subscription service for $49 a month or $297 for the whole year. So you can get the, in, uh, the interior ideas that we have on everything 
that uh, we cover. So uh, right now, I'm going to send it back to David. And uh, thanks, Doc uh, Severson, for being here. And uh, David, back to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Lots of good info today. So uh, um, yeah, just a quick reminder for everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your uh, favorite podcast app uh, to get updates uh, that way. Also, uh, if you just go to timingresearch.com, you can get access to the archive of this show as soon as I can get it posted or any of the past shows or episodes. And uh, and uh, just want to thank, thank my guests again for today, Doc Severson of readyset.trade and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Doc.